Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Coffee Time with Mr. Ning, with your host Mr. Ning. And today, we're gonna do a book title review in collaboration of Pack Publishing. So the title of this book is The Journey to Become Google Cloud Professional Machine Learning Engineer, which I thought is an extremely important topic to talk about in this episode. First things first, about the author, right? So the creator of this title, his name is Dr. Logan Song. And let me just tell you guys right now, this dude is all over the places, okay? He's an enterprise cloud director, he's a chief cloud architect, and then on top of that, he has 25 years plus experience in the industry. And on top of even that, setting the industry experience aside, he's Google Cloud certified, AWS certified, and Microsoft Azure certified. These are essentially the top three platforms that people use in the industry right now. So this dude is all in places. Right off the bat, I look at the author and I'm like, okay, you're in good hands, right? This guy has a lot of experience to share with you. And if you ever want to be a machine learning engineer, this book is the book to go. So I just want to say, I really appreciate that this author is bringing this level amount of experience onto the table and be willing to share what he has learned in the industry for these past 25 years. Now, with that being said, let's jump right in to a couple of interesting things that I've read about this book. The first thing about this book is the part one, which I really enjoy because in the beginning of a story, you want to lay out the motivation, why things are happening in the way that they do, right? So in part one of this title, the author went into great deal of detail to talk about the comprehension of the cloud architect. So what is a cloud architect and what is an enterprise level architect? That's something important, right? You don't want to just write a book about Google Cloud Platform and be like, hey, let's subscribe to this and you're going to get this service, right? That becomes a sales talk. So what I really appreciate is that that's not the end goal the author take. The author laid out why do you need this platform and why is this platform interesting at the first place? Before he jumps into the detail, the content about the actual material, the coding, and so on and so forth. So cloud architect, cloud platform, it's an extremely important concept, especially if you're running a corporation with thousands of people. All these engineers need to work together, work with data scientists to build a system together. So just like when people are having a meeting, you need an executive diagram to summarize what the meeting is about. The first part of this book summarizes what the cloud architect is about. Where's the database coming? How do you query the data? And how do you work with a data scientist? Where's the model going to go? Where's a virtual machine? How do they talk to each other? Right? All these pieces need to be laid out carefully and their roles need to be thought of in a very strategic manner. Otherwise, you're just wasting money, right? So what this author is doing for the first part of the book is to lay out the foundation. And then the next thing I want to mention is on an application level, how do you utilize these resources on Google Cloud Platform? So I think this book did a great job explaining this. Me personally, I've used AWS and I use AWS Heavy. So I'm going to use that as a benchmark to make some comparisons in terms of where your database is, how do you save your data in a bucket, how do you interact with the data, how do you bring the data out and build your machine learning models, and so on and so forth. So just like in AWS where you have some sort of autopilot, on Google Cloud Platform, they also have this similar thing as an autopilot. Basically what that means is instead of writing hundreds of lines of code, you have a click of a button or one line of code to put things together and just trigger that machine learning function. And usually it's a package, right? It's not just one model. It's a list of models where the machine automatically tests each of the model on your data. So there's of course pros and cons, right? Depending on where you come from, depending on what your background is, the pros and cons change. So one of the important pros is you no longer need to be involved with coding or programming. It makes the application process visual and it's dummifiable, right? 
with a click of a button, something will happen. So definitely saves you a lot of time, but then the downside, the con, is that, hey, these models are pre-packaged, are pre-coded. So if you want to personalize or customize model, obviously you need to break it down and have an engineer go in there and do some restructure. But even that, right, the good thing is for business leaders, for decision makers, if you just want a quick result, something dirty and preliminary, and all you gotta do is you define what are the features, you define what is the target, you want the machine to predict, and with the click of a button, the machine will automatically give you that result. And then you can take your way there to kind of analyze the results a little bit, use your domain knowledge, and then carry on with your regular business operations to make decisions. To which I thought it's definitely making things easier for most of the people out there. And me personally, I've touched upon some of these functions. I thought it was fairly easy to use and it definitely saved you a lot of time. But of course, in hindsight, there are data scientists who are using this platform as well. Computer scientists, programmers, they can of course open things apart, rewrite part of the package, or sometimes even just write your own package from fresh. All these things are doable on Google Cloud Platform. And me personally, I just want to say, I actually enjoy the interface or the IDE of Google Platform or the number that they provide you on Google Cloud Service. Whereas on AWS, there's certain keys that don't really work, there isn't really a manual bar, so on and so forth. So it depends on what the audience is coming from, right? This book also digs a little bit deeper into the basic Python command. So things like NumPy array, things like mathematical algebra, how do you design a plot using the library matplotlib, and then maybe some interactive visualization such as Seaborn, and so on and so forth. So I thought it's something nice to have, even though this book is focusing on Google Cloud Platform. Sometimes you could have a situation where you have that code on top of your head, but you just kind of forget the syntax, or you kind of miss a word or something. And having a few chapters in the middle of this book will help you out and serve as a dictionary to allow you to quickly fact check what goes inside of a function and what is the syntax. So I thought that's something nice to have, kind of like a pocket dictionary where you can look up code very quickly. And then the key component is obviously the machine learning part, which is the whole purpose of why Cloud Platform exists, right? We're building models, we're modeling. So what this book is also doing for you is to dig into the model a little bit, right? Instead of creating the content like a textbook, where you have a lot of mathematical jargon. What this book is doing for you is really to break that down. It breaks things down on a fundamental level and try to avoid some of the heavy mathematical syntax so that the knowledge is consumable and digestible for non-technical audience. And I thought that's pretty important because let's face it, school is expensive. We cannot require all our audience to go to four-year college and to pay 70 grand a year just to know a couple of mathematical syntax, right? We need to populate it. And it is the job of the creator of these contents to really dial things down and make it digestible for the regular customers. And I think that fundamentally is very important. And after review of this title, it's safe to say that this book gets that job done. So this also resonated with the AI for all promotion that we're all doing, right? It's the eight Ivy League University as well as Stanford professor Li Feifei as promoting AI for all, which essentially means we want to teach AI to each and everybody. And I think this book is on par and supportive of that application, which I really appreciate. Last thing I want to say is the wrapper method. It could be very technical, but I thought it's an important message to disclose. Every cloud platform that I use, one of the most important things that I look for is the wrapper method. In AWS, maybe you can call it the Lambda function. In Google Cloud Platform, they have their own name. But end of the day, we're talking about some sort of wrapper function such that you can pack together a list of things that you want to do and do them together. And guess what? The machine, the cloud platform that you're using better be able to help you do that job. Otherwise, what's the point of using 
all these expensive machines, right? So the key here is automation, and the wrapper function is the way to execute that, right? Every model that you have, you don't want to recode everything, right? Every argument that you have, you don't want to redefine everything. You want to put together in a nice dictionary, and the wrapper methods will read that dictionary, parse it, get into the code, and the machine will run itself, and the results will come out. So what this philosophy is really heading to is the AI-first decision-making process, where humans are making decisions based on results come from AI models. And I think this book dives into that level of sophistication in great detail. So with that being said, I hope you like this book review. Give a subscribe if you like the video, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.